Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for his presence here today. Without him, we're just a bunch of people getting together, wasting time. But I can tell you what, we're not wasting time here this morning. The presence of the Lord is in the house. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. Praise God. I am overly excited for several reasons. One, we've traveled over 15,000 miles and we're home safe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm told this thing called jet lag will be for every day I was gone. So seven days, they told me to get up and stare into the sun, and that'll help, help reset me. Well, the sun this morning, it was cloudy, so I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to be held responsible for anything I say or do because I'm not all here. But God is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, our team came back. We had a team of seven of us went to Homa Bay, Kenya. Uh, we had Mike uh, Hodges. He's on stage. He's going to come here and just uh, give you greetings from Africa. We had Michael Carr. Uh, he's gone back, traveled to Charlottesville. He's not here this morning. Uh, we had Terrence Dismuke. Is Terrence here? Uh, he, he's at work. Yep, yeah, he's at work. And, uh, and then we had, is Megan here? You want to say anything? Yeah, she could do it. She could do it. And she was representing the girls in, uh, from Christian Embassy. And then Caleb, Caleb is here. He, you, can bring that, you can bring that up here as well. Y'all come on up, come on up. And, uh, and then uh, we had Townsend. There's Townsend, yes, sir. And then myself. So uh, some, of them, some of us is here. Come on up here. They are not shy because I've seen them in front of hundreds and hundreds of clapping, shouting, worshiping, praising God, Kenyans, hallelujah. And, uh, and they jump right in. They serve the Lord and they represented Christian Embassy well. Praise the Lord. So um, I want them just to bring greetings to you and maybe make mention of something the Lord has shown them that they wanted to bring back from Kenya to you. Start it out, brother. So uh, I guess just sharing a quick story from town. Um, this, I got this suit in town. Pastor Daniel was adamant that I have a suit. So I was like, okay. So we get up. Um, we go. I'm thinking, oh, we're going to go to this nice spot that's here somewhere in Kenya I haven't seen yet. And uh, we pull up, and there's a shack with a Connex box. And the kids jump into action. They're pulling suits down. Here, try this. Try that. You know, they're, try, they're trying to make a sale. Long story short, I ended up with this suit, uh, went down the, another block, they pressed it with coals from a fire, so they poured the coals in the iron and they pressed it right there, then they took, then we went across the street and had it tailored right there on the spot with a sewing machine that's belt driven, yeah. <laughs> with his foot pedal, and he would sew with a, a belt driven sewing machine, so that gives you an idea of what they don't have, yeah. and I guess seeing what they don't have, when we walk into the church... I mean, the glory of God is just unbelievable. The joy of the Lord is present. Um, you can't help. I mean, we're, we don't even know what they're saying. You know, they're, they're, they're clapping, and we just start to clapping, and we get to going, and we were, we were having a good old time. I mean, God was there, and he was moving in a mighty, powerful way. Um, the first night we're there, and the, the, the wind began to blow through the church, and we're like, oh, this feels good. Then the rains came. Now, there was a dry season in Kenya. They don't get much rain. So God was saying, I'm, I'm going to let my wind blow through the church, and I'm bringing the rains of heaven to Kenya, and it's going to just spread. There's going to be so many seeds that are going to sprout from that, and we were just so excited. The power goes out, and they just keep on worshiping. If the power went out here, we'd be looking all around, pulling out cell phones. They didn't even stop. It's like the power didn't even go out. And I was just so blessed, uh, so blessed, so thankful. I came back so grateful for the things we have in this country, just running water. Just having basic necessities, the things that we take for granted. And I'm just so thankful for the opportunity. I'm so thankful to God for uh, allowing me to go and be a part of what he wants to do in Kenya. And we're going to continue to bless those people. Uh, so with what Mike said, just with um, how grateful, um, how grateful I am to have what I have and to live where I live, but seeing those people just worship God's name and having so little 
just really opened my eyes, and I feel like I was sent to Kenya to really just witness everything. And I am just very grateful that it was possible to do so. <laughs> Um, a lot happened, <laughs> so I could sit up here for hours just to get through everything, but um, I think my favorite takeaway was that I didn't realize I would have to go all the way to Africa to realize the true purpose of the altar, and um, I got this really cool video. It's probably one of my favorite ones out of like the hundreds. Uh, my dad, he was just preaching. <laughs> he, he didn't even start the close of the sermon yet. And he's just right in the middle of it, sharing his testimony. And they all just dive on the altar to the point where they're going around his pulpit. So he just picks it up and just <laughs> moves it to the back. And he's like, I guess we're starting ministry time. Um, but they, they didn't care. They weren't waiting for man to tell them to go and worship God. They were waiting for the Lord. And the moment that the Lord told them to do so, they went. And um, a second part that was one of my favorite things was um, the deliverances and stuff like that. Because we know that the witchcraft and generational curses, they're very heavy out there. But to be able to witness, I mean, the manifestations and um, the demons, <laughs> they're different out there. They're fighting, throwing like six different pastors around. They're trying to calm them down, keep them in one place. But then just to see the power of God come and shut that down. Because the enemy was just trying to distract the ministry time. And just to see that was a blessing on top of everything else that we were able to witness. Amen. And uh, amen, amen. For me, the thing that touched me the most was the purity in their worship and in their faith. These people had little to nothing. Some of them, some of the children didn't even have shoes. And yet they came in with a heart positioned to worship the God that created everything and that would provide breath in their lungs and water for them, which is a big thing for us. We take advantage of it, but for them is a big thing and for food on their table. And I honestly think if it wasn't for uh, us having other things planned, they would be there nonstop, 24-7. Yeah. They, they just love being in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. And they look to God as their provider because yeah. they have no other person yes, to look yes, to. Yes, yes, Sometimes yes. we look to our jobs oh, right. or to our families to help provide for us. But they don't have that. Their families are just as poor as they are. And a lot of them, their jobs are as simple as you know, getting uh, slaughtering cattle and doing that and selling their the meat. Um, so the purity of worship. And then, of course, you see even more of a purity in the children. And the mm -hmm. children truly touched my heart. Yeah. Um, I spent a few hours the last day with them. And they just love to sing to the Lord all day. And I'm talking 12 hours a day. 14, yeah. 14 hours yes, a day. Yeah. The children were there the whole time. They were engaged the whole time. And they were there with the same intention as the p adults. Yeah, they were yeah. there to worship God yeah, yeah. in everything they had. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yes, I would uh, say 14-hour services, so don't y'all complain about an hour and a half. <laughs> you better not. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Well... Yeah, as uh, the team said, truly God has moved. And I want to do a service somewhat different, much different than normally, because I'm a preacher. I love preaching. God gives me words, I preach. But today, God wanted me to share reflections from Kenya and the missions trip and the lessons that echo in my heart for transformation. And as your pastor, what God does to transform me has got to be a transformation for the whole body here. Because... If I'm a shepherd, an under-shepherd, and Jesus, the, the shepherd, the chief shepherd, is leading us, then we have to all go together. And uh, so that's why I want you, without you having to go 15,000 uh, miles to go experience it, you can experience it here in the air conditioning. Because there's one thing I can tell you, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Did I say it's hot? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Uh, that, that they were telling Pastor Daniel and his son Paul, they were laughing about Pastor Tim saying, did you know my dad built our church with an air conditioning vent under the pulpit 
because he likes coolness that much. And that concept they couldn't even imagine because it's hot. Did I say it's hot? It's really, really, really hot. So you're going to enjoy what we bring back to you in the comfort of this house. And you need to be praising God. You need to be shouting. If you really know the truth of it, you should run around the church, grab some of these flags and banners and worship thanking God for AC. Uh, Brother Dave, thank you. Our AC got, we praise God for AC. And, uh, but I just wanted to share with you some echoes of transformation that took place in my life. A little different from how I normally would preach, but I'm praying that God would use this to speak to you this morning. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as you've shared with me to share my personal reflections here, Lord God. I pray, God, it, it be not about me. It won't be about our team, but God, it'll be about you because it was all about you. These are your people. We are your people. And Lord God, you've called us together and we thank you for that. So, Lord, I just pray now that you would speak mightily through this message this morning and, and bring forth the truth that you want to come forth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And what a special moment to be able to share this with you. And, uh, and what a great morning to have Pastor uh, Paul and Olivia Tasia with us from Vermont. Amen. As they served as our children's pastor for years as we were building this building and, and our, we were, you, you, you put your time in the trailer <laughs> and uh, for sure. But uh, God moved them to Vermont and uh, they're doing great things there, working in the church. Uh, we've been there preaching in the church as well as the Vermont Inn there they have as a business, a bed and breakfast. And uh, so if you want to take a trip and enjoy Vermont, you can see them uh, after the service. But so good to have you guys uh, here with us as well as Bill and Linda and all of you. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. God is good. So here we are in uh, our ministry base in uh, Kenya is Homa Bay, the, the town of Homa Bay. And uh, Pastors Daniel and Christine o Oyoko, I've been working with them for about 10 years now. So even before we built this building, uh, we were helping build this church, Homa Bay, in Kenya. Uh, because as you can see the flags around here, God has called us to missions. And we're involved in these countries in one way or another to do missions and advance the kingdom of God. But really made connection through God with Pastor Daniel and Christine o Oyoko. And uh, for 10 years we've been working there. And from there, we ha he is very apostolic. And uh, he's like, teach me, Pastor, he calls me Dr. Dr. Pastor Timothy Lambert. The president, I'm like, okay, let's calm down here. But um, he, he uh, wanted to build churches and start churches in villages that didn't have churches. So we've worked with him in church planning over the years and helped him, give him the training for all the pastors. When we went there, we had on record 16 churches uh, in five countries. And um, so under all Christian embassies there under Pastor Daniel... And he said, I've got something to share with you when you get here. And it's, and it's good news. And so we got there, and uh, it has grown to 30 churches now. Uh, so we have 30 Christian embassy uh, churches, and uh, they're in eight countries now. So we're in Kenya and Uganda and Rwanda and Burundi and Democratic Republic of Congo and Tanzania and Malawi. Um, and, and there'll be more. There'll be more. And we had uh, the 60-plus pastors there... And uh, God told me to commission and ordain each of them as I've been training them through Pastor Daniel, through a lot of our electronical means, uh, and now I was able to go and touch them. And uh, God told me to take this Bible that I preach out of and lay it upon each of them and speak and pray over each of them. So 60 plus pastors, we commissioned, we ordained. Uh, they knew me through my teachings, uh, through electronics to them. But it was my first time to see them and meet them. And uh, what a powerful, powerful uh, time of ministry that was. So that's what you're a part of. Uh, also, you'll see right up here a little north, uh, east is, um, or northwest is uh, Cameroon. 
uh, Dr. Ivan and Dr. Louisa, uh, they are from Cameroon and there's ministry there. So they just got back from Cameroon. So we're going to be including that. I've written, we got a trip coming up to Cameroon if anybody wants to go. And uh, we'll be doing ministry there. Also, um, so, uh, Dr. Louisa's uh, brother in law, Gabila, is in South Africa. And, and God has given him uh, Swaziland and Botswana. Uh, as well as Mozambique and and Zimbabwe uh, universities, uh, uh, secular universities who are calling, please bring your Christian teaching into the secular university. We will give you you auditorium, we will give you classroom, we'll give you whatever you want, no charge, because our students that serve God, the students that serve Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior do better in every aspect of academics and social life and going and making our country better. We need Jesus. And uh, so... We just partnered with, with Gabila. He was here, he spoke uh, last month and uh, uh, for going there with our young adults to uh, teach and train for these uh, college campus ministries uh, that we're going to be setting up and giving curriculum for. So God is doing a lot in and through you guys and you need to just give yourselves a big hand because your presence and your giving makes all of this possible. All of this is possible. So we got there with the team, and you just met several of the team members. Uh, Brother Terrence, I mean, he was preaching down the house. I didn't know he had that kind of preach in him. Hallelujah. But he was spitting some bars. It was going good. And uh, he's working today. And then Brother Mike Carr, is, uh, his daughter Maya is here, but he's back in Charlottesville this morning, not able to be with us. You heard from Michael, and then you heard from Megan, and then Townsend was leading in worship, and Caleb's preaching. And uh, I'm getting to preach some too there. This is uh, his son, Pastor Daniel's son, Paul, who we're raising up uh, to take and and lead for the next generation. We're not going to let any of this work die down. Uh, If Pastor Daniel goes on to glory, Pastor Paul's going to pick it right up. So we ministered uh, in uh, eight worship services. We preached over 20 messages. Uh, There's been more preaching done in the last week than you can ever imagine Uh, hundreds were touched by God, they were saved, they were healed, they were delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost. I talked to Pastor Daniel this morning, which is their afternoon, they're seven hours ahead, so they've already had church, and the official report came in this morning that there were uh, 93 people saved in the conference, hallelujah, and, and prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there were 23 uh, confirmed healings. And he said, not just where a pain left. He said, a healing where a blind eye can now see, a deaf ear can hear, a a dumb tongue can talk, and a lame leg can walk. He said, Pastor, I'm talking about that which you cannot deny. We've got 23 confirmed healings. And he says, the people are on fire. What you did here continues. He said this morning was an absolute amazing, amazing service that they had. So all of this has happened for the glory of God. It is you joining with us, reaching out to them. And God is getting the glory for it all. So what I wanted to do this morning is share with you some transformative insights that I gained. And as your leader, as I'm being transformed, I want it to be shared with you that it would transform your life as well. So what I want to talk about in these transformative insights is number one, I saw there and God spoke it so loudly to me that simplicity is profound. Simplicity is profound. Here they are living amidst uh, the, the, uh, this where it seems like there's almost nothing in their life and it makes them focus on what life is all about. And it reminded me that we live in such a hustle and a bustle that we forget the beauty of simplicity. And, and I witnessed there that they, they are not ruled by consumerism. Uh, instead, they are looking at the basic necessities of life And because of that, they focus more on relationship and on helping one another than on trying to outdo others, if you know what I'm talking about. And the gleeful children playing with their little homemade toys, 
are so contented and full of joy and the fishermen coming on what looks like an old, old kayak, they would be coming back with the day's catch and had such a, a joyful look on their face of contentment. Not that they have anything to accumulate. They don't have constant electricity, so there's no refrigeration, so they're not even thinking about hoarding anything up because it would spoil. It's like God is provided for today and we thank God for today. And it reminded me of the simplicity uh, and how profound that can be because I've got a lot going on and you have a lot going on. And we're juggling, juggling, juggling. And if we're not careful, we're missing the moments of when God wants to work miracles in and through our lives because we're just so focused on trying to keep everything going that we're uh, uh, involved in. So I would say to myself, as I would say to you, is let's not get so focused on being busy as we are in being busy to love on one another, seeing that every day we are prioritizing one another. We're prioritizing our relationships. If you're married, you're prioritizing your marriage. If you have children, you're prioritizing your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your, the body of Christ. We need to be come back to the simplicity of life and say, what we need to do is make sure everybody's doing okay. So that is so important. So that was one. Another uh, echo of transformation that came to me was the real community, the real community that I saw uh, and here I'm coming from an environment where we're growing more and more individualistic. It's all about me and my kingdom and my world and what I'm doing in my household and my business and my finances and my, 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 my. Whereas here, uh, there's this true sense of community and togetherness. Uh, eating commun uh, common meals together. They shared their chores together, uh, collective prayers together. And it reminded me of ancient biblical communities where they shared the purpose uh, and, and life together to make sure everybody's okay. And, uh, and you know, when we pray that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's will to be done. We need to be about building up God's kingdom rather than building our kingdom. All other kingdoms will fail, the Bible says. So whatever you're trying to build up is not going to heaven. Only one another, only relationships, only that which is eternal is going to heaven. So let's prioritize one another and not let God bring, um, the enemy bring anything in to separate us, to separate our friendship, to separate our relationship, to separate our families. And let's say that's of the devil. I'm not going to allow it. God wants us to be united in him. And that is truly something I saw there. Uh, another echo of transformation was uh, faith beyond words. Uh, there in Homa Bay, faith is not confined to a Sunday service. It's not something they pull out of their Bible for a Wednesday night Bible study. It's a lived experience. Their unwavering faith in the face of adversity, I'm telling you, it is humbling to say the most. Whether they're dealing with health challenges, whether they're dealing with erratic weather, whether they're dealing with a lack of food and water, which there was, uh, whether they're dealing with uh, personal trials, it, it showed me what it is to truly walk by faith. Uh, pa uh, Pastor Daniel's son, uh, his name is Paul. He's never ridden a bicycle, never owned a bicycle. He's never heard of McDonald's, didn't even know what that was. Uh, this is, we're talking about poverty like you've never known. Limited and cut off from the world, never heard of the Holocaust, never doesn't know what World War I, World War II, anything like that. It's just an isolated people that are surviving. And, uh, and, and we went out into the village where he grew up and he was showing me some brick uh, structure. There used to be a house there and just a little bricks left there now. And, uh, he, and, and he teared up and I said, what's wrong? And I started to pry in to see what was wrong. And he said, well, this is where I grew up and, and uh, I had a brother. His name was Felix and we played. I can see us playing out here uh, as children. And he was my older brother. And, uh, and there used to be a house there, and that's where I, I grew up. And I said, well, where's Felix now? And he said, oh, he's right over there. And I said, where? And he said, oh, he's buried over there. And I said, what happened? He said, well, he died when he was 17. 
And I said, what happened? He said, well, he got sick and we had no money. We could not buy medicine. So we had to just hold his hand and watch him die. And then he just broke and started weeping as he watched Caleb and Townsend. And he said, you know, I see brothers together and I think, you know, I could be like that. Uh, I used to be like that with Felix. And, and, and when you look at where real pain comes in and, and some of the challenges of, of just getting some simple medication that we take for granted, that it costs lives, it just breaks your heart. There's no running water in the homes. That, and, uh, you know, they're kids, little children from the smallest to the largest, all carrying these jugs with lids on it uh, of water, having to go find a well somewhere, maybe miles and miles away uh, to try and get water back in the house just for that day, just to have to cook with or to, to drink in the home. And yet they're walking by faith and not by sight. They're declaring Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. They know they're going to heaven and they know it's a land that flows with milk and honey. They know they're going to a place where they'll have water to drink. They know that Jesus is the living water and they're like, it doesn't matter what I'm going through down here. This is but a short season, but we're going to live for eternity. And they're walking by faith. And I said, you know what? The Bible says we should walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to take this home with me and I'm going to take this back to Christian Embassy and I'm going to encourage you that no matter what your circumstances are and no matter how challenging they may be, that you'll keep your eyes on God, that you'll keep your eyes on Christ uh, and when you look to him and not the wind and the wave you can walk on the water like Peter walked on the water but when you get your eyes off of Christ and you look at the wind and you look at the waves and you look at your circumstances and you look at the negative you're going to sink and I'm telling you these people have learned to walk by faith that has touched my heart in a special way another echo of transformation is the uh, that of creation. Oh my goodness. Uh, waking up to the serene views of Lake Victoria as we were there. Uh, I think one of the, the largest uh, God created lake in the world. And uh, it was a constant reminder that, that of God's beauty and his, of his creation. And every sunset and every sunrise and every bird chirping and gentle ripple on the water was reminding me that even though we're in a land that is struggling and governments have made uh, bad decisions that have put them in a very compromised and, and, and tough situation, the evil of man has tried to, 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 to lessen the beauty of the land, but yet God still shows us his beauty there. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, no matter what you're going through, if you'll get your eyes on the Lord, he'll show you the beautiful side of it. He'll show you some great things about it. Uh, because it is, as this land is, your life is beautiful because of God. We were able to go to the Ruma uh, National F uh, Park and do a um, safari there. Uh, here's the bus. I call it the meat tenderizer. Um, <laughs> it, it, is, it is one that will, if we rode for hours and hours and miles and miles through the safari on all these rocky roads, it's like going through one of the most severe potholes you've ever seen in Virginia. But there's one right after the other, after the other, after the other for hours. And the bus has been beaten. Its shocks are gone. So you can only imagine. So it's the meat tenderizer. We were ready for the skewer. We were ready to be grilled after this. It was in the, and the whole front windshield where they insisted I sit to get the best view was all glass. And can, you know what the sun and glass do? In a hot, hot place and sun and glass, we as kids used to take the magnifying glasses you got in Cracker Jacks. You remember Cracker Jacks used to give you toys that were worth something. And we'd take the little magnifying glass and we would start a leaf on fire. You know, well, I, got, I caught on fire, okay? Just say the least, I caught on fire. But you're sitting here in the cool looking and this looks amazing, but just picture it from being beat to death in the heat and all. But no, it's all good. And, uh, but we got to see some beautiful things in this land. Uh, here's some pictures I took. A giraffe right out of the window. Here's our driver, one of the soldiers there. Uh, the guys on the bus being tenderized in the back. Uh, this is Paul, uh, Pastor Daniel's son. He insisted in sitting right next to me because he wanted to learn more about God. And he was squeezing everything out of me. Uh, right here is a rowan antelope uh, right under Paul here. There's only 25 of them left in the world. 
And they're here in this protected place. They're trying to get them to reproduce. And uh, he, he turned his rear to us. He said, I don't want nothing to do with you. And uh, here's a little monkey that's mad because we wouldn't give him anything. We wanted to give him something, but they told us, do not feed the animals. And, and uh, so he's pouting. He's mad at me. Uh, Kate Buffalo that thought he wanted to charge the bus, but then said it's too hot, too much effort. Uh, a zebra... And here's a rhinoceros, uh, the black rhinoceros, and he said it's too hot for me to get up. We tried everything to make him stand up. He's under the shade, but he said, I'm not getting up. You bunch of idiots, it's hot out here. <laughs> and, uh, and some of the things that we were able to witness while we were there, uh, God's creation is absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. So what I want to emphasize is that no matter where you're at, if you'll say, God, help me see the beauty in this. You may be in a challenging relationship, but if you'll ask God to show you the beauty in that relationship, he may have to take you back how you got together, but you let God start leading you and you will gain an appreciation for going forward. I love this land now. You know, I don't like hot, but I'm going back. You know, uh, it was uncomfortable, but if you go, I'll take you on the, the bus as well because I have such a love for these people and this land because God showed me it goes beyond my level of comfort or discomfort. God is greater than that. Amen. And then another echo of transformation for me was the language of generosity they had. Despite the challenges that they were facing there in uh, Homa Bay, I was overwhelmed by their generosity. The generosity I encountered was mind-boggling. Uh, from one... We got there and uh, they served meals at the conference for everyone who had walked, who had traveled, who had come in renting the ride of a back of a motorcycle, those that had the money to rent the ride of a van or something that dropped them off, they're there. And the church is there and there's no running water. There's only an outhouse and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. You don't go down the street to buy food. There's, that's... That's not a concept. Your concept of drop into Wawa and get something, that, that doesn't exist. You, none of that exists. There's nothing. And uh, so it, we had to feed them. Pastor Daniel was feeding them. And to afford it, they stretched everything they had. They're feeding them beans and rice. So they're eating all their meals, just beans and rice. That's it, and water. And, uh, but yet they sit us at our table out in the hot sun outside behind the church, their fellowship grounds, and uh, this is what they placed before us. And when I looked at it and the beauty of what they were able to take, that I don't know if it's a pepper or what, and the lime and everything, they just made it to the presentation. Nobody else got anything like this except our team. And I began to weep, and I'm like, I can't eat this. So what I did, and, um, and Ava was supposed to go, Michael Hodge's daughter, and a thing with her passport, and she couldn't get it back in time. So they had an extra plate there for her. And uh, so I took that plate, and I took my plate, and I ate these two little pieces right here. And then I took the rest over to the tables, and I started sharing it with other people. And uh, I just could not sit there and eat like that while they're eating beans and rice. And, and I was so, I'm like, I can go home and I can eat anything that I want. When I get back to an airport that has something, I could get anything that I want. Here, they don't have anything, but yet they're giving us the best. And, and it was such a language of generosity that, that touched my heart. They never asked us for anything. They did not ask us for money. They did not ask us for uh, material things. Uh, even the children were not begging us for candy or anything. They wanted to bless us. They wanted to love on us. They wanted to give to us. And I said, now this is how it's supposed to be. This is the heart of Christ that is shining forth here. Hallelujah. And then one of the echoes of transformation for me is the value of time. You know, in our Western world, we're often racing against the clock. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, that's not the case in Homa Bay. I learned there the value of time. You know, here, time isn't just minutes and hours. It's moments of genuine human connection. That's how they measure time. 
where they would get together. We had 14 hour services, 14 hours. And, 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 and it's like you don't get tired of each other. You're, you're, you're praying for one another. You're ministering. You're receiving. You're eating together. You're praying for one another. You're sharing stories with one another. You're, you're fellowshipping with one another. You're ministering. It's just on and on. Uh, that Soaking in the beauty of the presence of God uh, and the presence of what God was doing was priority to them. They, they were not concerned about my business, not concerned about my bank account, not concerned about whatever they left back home. They said, we are here for the body of Christ. What do you need? And they kept asking me, what do you need? Are you okay? Do you need anything? Every one of the pastors that I talked to, they're out of town. They have probably nowhere to even sleep that night. I don't even know where they slept. But they're saying to us, what do you need? And now... To be honest, we did book rooms in the only, only, only building in all of Homa Bay that I saw that was anything a semblance of what we have here. And it was the Cold Springs Hotel. And it had AC when the electricity was on. It did have AC when the electricity was on. It had water when the electricity was on. But the electricity is not always on. But so, so there we are. In the lap of luxury, you might would say, is where we're staying, whereas compared to what we have here, it wasn't the lap of, lap of, lap of luxury, but not, you hear what I'm saying. And yet they're asking us, what do you need? Do you need anything? And uh, so it was just so heart-touching to see how they wanted to uh, spend that time with us and bless us. And then finally, one of the reflections that I have is the essence of joy. Let me tell you what, the essence of joy... Perhaps that was the most profound lesson was the seeing in these children, in these adults, the essence of joy. Despite their challenges, I mean, from their health, from the infrastructure, uh, from whatever was happening in their life, the lack of food to eat, yet there was laughter, there was joy, and it was contagious. And, and it showed me that joy is not circumstantial. We Americans, if we're not careful, we get into a spirit of being spoiled. Come on now. And if it works out my way, I'm happy. If God's doing it what I want him to do, then I'm happy with God. They're seeing just the opposite of what their flesh would want, but yet they have the joy of the Lord. It is a deep-rooted joy that, that uh, uh, shows forth a faith in Jesus Christ that I said, I want to live like this. I don't want to be moved because of my circumstances. I don't want to be moved because things aren't going the way I want them to. I want to serve God with gladness every day of my heart. And, the Bible, and God gave me that word in Nehemiah 8 and 10. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody came in here weak today. Somebody came in here with a problem today that is draining you dry. It is pulling you down. It is depressing you. It is, it is hindering you. It is chaining you. But I'm here to tell you there's strength to overcome. There's power that came on Samson to break the chains. There's power that came on Samson to tear down the walls and the gates of the Philistines. It is the power that came on Samson to destroy the enemy. It's the same power of God that will come on you when you have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So I want to give you three reasons why you need to have joy. Number one, joy chases away depression. Depression is a demonic evil spirit. Depression is one of the leading spirits that the enemy uses on Americans. I didn't find it on those in, in Homa Bay because they had joy in the midst of their circumstances. But here in America, if things don't go the way we want them to, or as fast as we want them to, or as high as we want them to, or as easy as we want them to, we open the door for the demonic realm. And we say, well, it's a chemical imbalance. Or we say, well, you just don't understand my circumstances. I'm here to tell you Satan is about to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to kill you. He wants to steal anything you've ever gotten ahead on. He wants to take it back. But there's a plan from God that will circumvent and take out the devil. And that's the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord chases away depression. The spirit of depression 
depression has to go when the joy of the Lord has to come. Hallelujah. He said in John 16 and 22, you have, so, you have sorrow now, but your hearts will rejoice and no one will be able to take joy from you. You may have sorrow, depression is coming, but joy is going to drive it away. Joy is going to take it out of the camp and you nobody's going to be able to take your joy and you can live with the blessings of the Lord. Second reason is joy helps you receive from God. God wants to get to you. He's not going to come in and come around your bad attitude and get to you. He is, he is in no obligation to feed your spoiled tantrum to try and make you happy. God, it's not God. He's not buying you bubble gum at the checkout counter because you're on the floor pitching a tantrum to make you do right. He's, that's not the parent that he is. He will walk away and leave you there doing the tantrum by yourself. He's not going to give you the gum that you're fighting for. So what we have to learn to do is we have to learn to do it God's way when it's not easy. Do it God's way when there's a challenge. Do it God's way when it's climbing a greased pole because God said do it that way. And God said, I want you to have joy. He said, rejoice always. That's what he said, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16. He didn't say rejoice when it goes your way. Don't rejoice when you get your bubble gum. Don't rejoice when you get your Coca-Cola at the checkout counter. Don't rejoice when the bills are paid. Don't rejoice when everybody's happy and clappy. He said, rejoice always. So he says, I'm telling you to rejoice always. And I'm really watching to see if you're going to rejoice when you're under the gun. I'm going to see if you're really going to rejoice when things are going backwards in your life because I'm telling you to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. And if you'll do that, then you will see heaven open up and God will provide supernaturally in your life not to satisfy your tantrum, but because you chose not to have a tantrum and bless the Lord in the midst of your challenge. He said, now I can bless you. Hallelujah. So joy helps us receive from God. You want to receive from God? Check your attitude. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. You need to check your attitude. And then the next thing that joy does is it keeps you healthy. Anybody here want to live a long, healthy life? Anybody here want to live a long, sick, broke, busted, disgusted life? Please don't raise your hand. If you do, you're sleeping. You just thought you were supposed to raise your hand. <laughs> joy keeps you healthy. The Bible says a joyful heart is good medicine. See, God created your body. Doctors study what God created. Psychologists study what God created. Psychiatrists study what God created. Cardiologists study what God created. Your primary care physician studies what God created. They can't change it. They have to either work with it, try to figure out how it works and help it, but they can't change it. Now, the God who created you, the God who put your cellular structure together, your DNA together, the God that gave you every system that operates your body and every organ that is functioning and every gland that is functioning in your body, he said this, that if you will take on a joyful heart, it will be good to med like medicine to you. It will be good medicine to you. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Now our life, God knows how he created us. And our life emanates from our, within our bones. Every cell that you have and the blood that comes, comes from the marrow, it comes, it's formulated and manufactured in the bone. So from the source of life, he says the enemy has access to bring destruction in your life rather than health when you live without joy. But he says, I'm giving you a choice. You can choose my joy, and it's not because your circumstances are good, but it's because I'm a good God who can change your circumstances. That you will have joy in me, not to get from me. Oh, if you're my sugar daddy, get to me. No, he said, I want you to have joy in me because I am your God. You have surrendered to me. I am king of kings and lord of lords. And if you'll have joy in that, 
then I'll cause from the marrow of your bone to be produced healthy cells uh, that will go into every organ and every system uh, and every uh, 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 gland in your body with healthy cells that will rejuvenate you and bring youth like that of an eagle. That you will live a full and a healthy life if you have joy. Now, I'll go to Homa Bay where there is so little and there's such a challenge and God speaks this to me and he says, you take this message back to my people because I want my people healthy. I want my people whole. I want my people to live a long, full life. But you tell them it is the joy of the Lord that will be their strength. Hallelujah. So in essence, I come to you this morning Homa Bay was more than a missions trip. It was a spiritual odyssey for me. And it's my prayer that as we traverse our life's journey, we will carry these profound lessons to our homes, back to our businesses, back into our schools, back into the marketplace, recognizing that God doesn't always have to speak through thunder and lightning, but he also speaks with a small, gentle whisper. And that he would speak to you and you would hear him say unto you what instructions he has for you this week. These are the echoes of transformation that has taken place in my life and that I wanted to bring back to you. Now, when I came in, we had traveled maybe 30 hours almost. I was so tired. I didn't know if I was standing or sitting, but... I knew my life has changed. So I sat down and I said, God, before I forget, I don't want to ever forget what I've experienced. Because you know we have the tendency to refocus, move on and forget. I said, God, help me. And I began to write down reflections. So I wrote down my Kenya reflections of what I felt the Spirit of the Lord was saying to me and the tenderness and the weakness of my moment before I got strong again and refocused. And I want to share them with you. I'm just going to read them just like I wrote them. And I pray the Lord would speak to you as he spoke to me and that we would close this service today with these reflections. Hi, everyone. Pastor Tim here. With a heart brimming with love, In compassion, I reach out to you, sharing the profound and soul-stirring journey. I've just returned from Kenya, Africa. And as the pastor of Christian Embassy International Church, I had the honor and I had the privilege to commission and ordain and pray over more than 60 pastors across our 30 churches there, including our dear Bishop Daniel Oyoko at our headquarters church in Homa Bay, Kenya. Our team of seven filled with zeal and the Holy Spirit. We preached over 20 messages. We prayed unceasingly. We worshiped fervently. We witnessed hundreds find salvation, experience healing and deliverance, and embrace the Holy Spirit's presence and infilling. The Kenyan people, with their radiant faith and joy, they welcomed us with the purest love and hospitality imaginable. While hundreds ate only beans and rice at each meal, they insisted we eat a gourmet presentation of their best. And while we were so thankful for their generosity, we just could not eat this alone and we had to share it with everyone we could. Living with so little, they exhibited a contentment and a joy in the Lord that moved us beyond words. Now that we're back in the United States, my body is here, it has returned but a massive part of my heart lingers with my African family. The contrast between our lives here and their humble existence there, it is stark, yet their joy and their faith in the Lord is unshakable. Driven by a love that transcends borders, I'm on my knees and I'm praying for champions to join me in a mission that is both simple and profound. A mission to drill water wells on our African church's properties, offering both life-sustaining water and the living water of Jesus Christ to each village and township. Just as Jesus... Just as Jesus met the woman at the well, that the village people will come to get the living water, life-sustaining water, but they too will meet Jesus Christ, the living water. 
This is a mission also to bring electricity into their worship places and to gift them with Bibles and to provide worship instruments that will echo their praise and worship. They worship God like we've never seen. They take what little they have and they lift their voices and they clap their hands and they stomp their feet and they worship God from the depth of their heart for hours and hours. Can we give them instruments? Can we help them do even more? We also want to provide Bishop Daniel Oyoko a vehicle as he now rents a ride on the back of a motorcycle to go and visit each of our 30 churches to bring them our teachings. He carries an old broken uh, taped together laptop with our teachings from here in America on, uh, on his back as he rides these motorcycles to go to these villages to sit with these pastors and to share them the teachings that we get every Sunday here. And the teachings that we send, uh, he spends time with them, many times having to sleep outside just to go to the next one. He needs a vehicle. He needs a vehicle that can go through these rocky and dirt roads and these long and dangerous uh, where the weather is extreme and unrelenting. He's nearing 70 years old in a land where the average lifespan of a man is in his 60s. He's outlived anyone. There's no one around him that even looks his age as he's outlived them all. He's he's a miracle, but yet he's traveling on the back of a motorcycle or walking for miles and miles to go and take the message from this house. He has a driver's license. He can drive. We will get him a vehicle. He's a living miracle. And there's his son, Paul, at 24, right by his side saying the church and the work of the Christian embassy will not cease. It will continue for the next generation. He sounds like our young people. He sounds like Townsend and Caleb and our young people who said the ministry of Christian Embassy USA will not stop with Pastor Tim. It will go to the next generation. We have a Paul in Homa Bay who says the same thing about Christian Embassy Africa in a world drowning in need. I've walked through their homes and I've walked through their churches, my dear family in the Lord, and I, and I want to share with you their need is more real than I have words to express. And while we cannot help everyone and there's so much need in the world, we can help and uplift them. We can't help everyone in the world, but we can help them. We can make a tangible difference in their lives. So I ask you, will you join me? Will you extend your hand in fellowship and love to make this divine difference in Kenya and our 30 Christian embassy churches there in the nations around? Together we can be a reflection of Christ's love and an answer to prayer. Will you be a champion living water lifeline in Africa? Will you help us drill these wells? Will you help us bring electricity into these churches? Will you help us put a roof over these churches? Will you help us get that vehicle for Pastor Daniel and a newer laptop that is not taped and held together? If you will, you can go to our website, myembassy.org. This is the this is the call to action. I've never done a call to action like this. I mean, we're going to have ministry at the altar here in just a minute, but this is a call to action. You know, we don't need to be hearers of the word anymore. We've got to be doers of the word. And God has shown your pastor and and, and, and the witnesses of the team members and they all will come and affirm and confirm what I'm saying is true. That there are genuine people that are people of God who don't have food to eat tonight. They don't have electricity. They don't have running water. They may have to walk all day long just to go get water and bring it back so they have that day's water and maybe the next. We can do something, and we are going to do something. We're going to do more. So you can go to myembassy.org, and there it says donate, and there's a fund drop down. Right now it still says, I think, Kenya Missions Trip. Use that fund. It's going to change its name to Kenya Missions uh, because the missions trip there is over right now, but that will give you full credit for it. We're going to help Pastor Daniel. We're going to help... Pastor Paul, we're going to help Pastor Christine, we're going to help those 60 plus pastors that are ordained and commissioned, we're going to help those 30 churches, we're going to do our part, we're going to get water life, light sustaining water for those villages but when they come 
to draw their buckets full and their containers full, there's going to be ministers there to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ and explain what the true living water is. We're going to see these souls in heaven. One day when we get to heaven, we're part of the time of eternity is our introduction to those souls that have come into the kingdom of God because of what we did. So here's the call to action. Will you partner? We will be formulating this week a, a, a form that you can give recurring gift to that, uh, talking about the Champion Living Water Lifeline. Uh, we didn't have time to do all of that. We just know we need to act and we need to do something. And Home of Bay Church, the main church, we need to get a well there first. There was no running water on that whole compound, just two outhouses with pits in the floor, just pits. And that's it. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that are coming there every week for ministry. And there are thousands, 1.3 million people in Homa Bay. And the ones around that church can come and hear that these aren't just people that sing about Jesus. They help give that free water as well. And then the water of life that comes through Christ. Will you be a part? You can do that. And uh, you say, well, I'm not electronic savvy. Well, there's giving envelopes. You can just write Kenya missions on it. And there's a box out in the foyer, right? To, as you exit on the left, that's mounted on the wall. You can just drop it in there. Pray about it and do something this week or next week. I, that's just your call to action. But as much as God showed us his power and his love and his presence in Homa Bay, Kenya, and Nairobi, Kenya, and in Kisumu, Kenya, he is here in Chesapeake, Virginia to show his power and love this morning. And I'm saying to you, if you need anything from God, if you need, first and foremost, you need salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the fact is, it's not God's plan, but you're choosing to reject him and go to hell. Not God's plan. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but you've got to receive him. And if you've not received Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, today is the day to do just that. Secure your eternity. Call on the name of Jesus. Repent of your sins. Invite Jesus in to be your Lord and Savior and surrender your life to Him and go out of here today knowing that you're walking your steps of eternity, that you're going to forever be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Death can't even separate you from Him if you're saved. Hallelujah. And then if you need healing in your body, God's a healer. If you need deliverance today, God's a deliverer. If whatever you need from God, you need encouragement, God will encourage. You need a turnaround miracle, God's a turnaround God. So whatever you have need today, we're going to have our prayer ministers come. If everybody would stand, prayer ministers come. They're going to stand here and they're going to make themselves available to pray with you. So as they're coming, if you need prayer, come to one of our prayer ministers now and let them stand with you in faith, praying the prayer of faith to see the miracle of God manifest in your life. So whatever your need is, if there's a need today, God is here to meet that need. He is Jehovah Jireh, my God, your provider. He is our God, our provider. Hallelujah. And he wants to touch you. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's our God, our healer. He wants to touch and heal whatever you need. You just got to have faith to come. Remember, we walk by faith. You have faith to come. Two or more touching and agree and believe in anything here on earth. It will be done for them in heaven. Just come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray now, God, as your Holy Spirit is drawing us. First unto salvation. Oh, God, if there's anybody here today that needs to be saved. Oh, that they would call on your name, Jesus. Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come and be established on the throne of my heart. Forgive me of my sins, oh God. Forgive me, I pray. Lord God, as I turn from my wickedness and I turn to you, Jesus, to live for you, to serve you, to walk after you. If you're here today and you need a healing in your body, Oh, that the power of God would just touch you right now. That the power of God would bring healing to you right now. That the power of God would just touch and transform your life right now by His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And if there's a need in your life today, maybe a need of resources, a need of wisdom, a need of breakthrough, a need of healing in your marriage, a need of healing in a relationship, whatever it is, just come right now in the name of Jesus. Let your healing power. God, you're the only God that can reconcile. You're the only God that can take that which the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. You're the only one that can take uh, something that seemingly is destroyed and burnt and ashes and, and bring beauty out of it, Lord God. Lord, turn their ashes to beauty, Lord God, I pray. Do a turnaround. What the enemy meant for evil, turn it for good. Turn it for good. What the enemy meant for his glory, turn it for good. And your glory today, God, I pray. Lord, touch your people, I pray. Lord, touch their hearts. Lord, as we come together as a church, a united front to take the gospel message greater to Africa than ever before. Lord God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Together, we're going to do more. Together, not only thousands, but tens of thousands and even millions of souls are going to be impacted, Lord God. As we partner together, we're going to see the gauge moving uh, uh, as your kingdom is coming and your will is being done here on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, I pray for every person that is here today, whether they're a visitor for the first time, God, or they've been coming here for all these years, Lord God, I pray your special hand of a blessing to touch them. Lord God, for your voice, Lord God, to be heard by their ear, Lord. Lord God, for them to have a, a, a moving of your spirit in them and through them, that they, are, they have a purpose, they have a destiny. Lord God, that, they, that you've created them with, to do great and mighty things, Lord. That the years that they have left are important years. They're important years. The mistakes are behind us. The future is ahead of us. And there's higher ground that you're taking us to. Now, God, as we go into this week, I pray, Lord, your hand of protection upon each and every one under the sound of my voice. And those that are tuned in, Lord God, let your healing and your power and your protection reach them in their living room or wherever they're tuned in, Lord God. Lord, let there be a mighty move of your spirit on us and in us and through us as we go into our respected places, Lord God. Protect us as we travel. And I pray, God, your favor and your blessings upon them as we go now in the mighty name of Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to continue to pray around the altar as long as prayer is needed. But you're at liberty to go. How about love on one another? Shake somebody's hand. Hug somebody's neck. And let's fellowship together for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.